88, yes. She went in for a colonoscopy and wasn't dead in two weeks. That's all. So I was a little, I was afraid. I mean, we don't know. You don't know what's going to be. So the fear of what he may have found was worse than, you know, there was no, no, no issue there. The drugs were great. I can see why I don't use drugs, because I'd be an addict. So they found nothing. Diminutive polyp in the cecum. Small polyp in the sigmoid colon. One diminutive polyp in the sigmoid colon. That's it. Nothing. So now I have a new lease on life, unless I got run over by a, uh, a terrorist in a, in a Mack truck or something like that. Uh, I have to figure out what to do with the rest of my life now. It appears God has given me a new lease on life. What should I do with it? Now, I got to tell you something. In the waiting room, this is an interesting story to me, again, it's to me. I decided most people go into doctor's offices and they don't pray. They don't know how to pray. They don't know where to turn to pray. They think that they'd be goofy if they prayed in an American East Coast or West Coast hospital ward or waiting room. No one does it, right? Maybe in the Deep South they do. But you want me to tell you the truth? Hey, Ryan, give me the prayer book. I need it now. I took with me a little prayer book I've had since I'm 13 years old that my grandmother gave to me. I was never a religious kid. It was a beautiful uh, white leather-bound prayer book. And I've always carried it with me. You know, sometimes I'd look at it, sometimes I wouldn't. I opened it up while I'm sitting there in the waiting room, and I read a prayer. And what if I tell you that this prayer gave me strength? You'd say he made it up. Now, what is the difference if the mythology of the prayer makes no sense whatsoever? Which, because it 